Hello, it's Carolyn from the Purple Poncho. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun loop stitch that I've used to make this Tunisian spa cloth. So the back is flat and then the front has all the loops on top. This is alternating a Tunisian stitch, simple stitch, and Tunisian pearl stitch. And the loops are made on the return pass. So let me show you how Today to Today I'm using a size 6.5 millimeter furls Tunisian crochet hook. And I'm also using some Lily sugar and cream, cotton yarn, and it's just the color in off-white. And this is all I have left from that giant skein. So to begin, make a slip knot and place it on your hook. I'm going to chain 12. I have 12 stitches and rotate your uh, chain to the back going into the next back bump insert your hook there yarn over and pull up a loop go into the next back bump insert yarn over and pull up a loop and we're going to repeat that all the way across and we will have 12 loops on our hook I have 12 loops on my hook and now we're going to do a standard return pass so yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and we're going to repeat that all the way across now for row that's our foundation row row one consists of the forward pass and the return for row two on this pattern I'm doing a purl stitch so bring the yarn down to the front yarn over and pull through bring the yarn down yarn over and pull through and I have videos on the Tunisian simple stitch and also the Tunisian purl stitch so if you're new to these stitches I will link those as well so continue the purl stitch all the way so to now I'm ready to do my return pass for row 2 and this is where the loops will start so I'm going to yarn over and pull through one and then yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two again okay so now I'm going to stop and I'm going to chain six at this point so to chain six just yarn over and pull through there's one three five <clears throat> and six so I have the six chains now we're going to continue with our return pass. So yarn over and kind of bring your loops together again on your hook. So yarn over and pull through two. One and two. And yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And I'm going to stop again. So <clears throat> I have three stitches here. Okay, and now I'm going to do chain six again. Two, four, five, and six. And yarn over, pull through two. And yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. 
and I'm going to stop again because I have those three stitches there and chain six again. And six and then yarn over, pull through two until you're back at the beginning with one loop on your hook. So let's take a look. So this looks really, really strange and not very, <laughs> not very well put together. Okay, so what we're going to do now, and so that if it's looking like this, then you're doing just fine. Okay, so the next row is going to be a Tunisian simple stitch. So this stitch here counts as our first stitch, so we're going to come over to the next stitch and do a Tunisian simple stitch and another in the next stitch. And then bring in your chain to the front and kind of holding it down a little bit. Then finding your first stitch on the other side of your chain, insert and do a Tunisian simple stitch right there, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then just make sure that there's not a big gap right here with your yarn. Okay, so just keep it so that it's nice and evenly going across. And then go into the next stitch. Tunisian simple stitch and again in the next. So we have three and then we have our loop and then we have three and then we have another loop. So again kind of bring it together and pull it down. Find that next set of three stitches. Go into the first one. Tunisian simple stitch and pull up and then continue across in that same sequence. And then the last loop, bring that down <clears throat> and Tunisian simple stitch. And then going through both loops on the edge, yarn over and pull up a loop. So that's how it's looking. On the return pass, we're going to make the chain six loops again. So for the return pass, yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we're going to stop and chain six. It's going to be directly over the original chain that we did here, chain loop. They're going to be all stacked up on top of each other. So chain six. And six, and then yarn over, pull through two, three times, and we're over our next chain loop. Go ahead and chain six again, and then yarn over, pull through two, three times. And we're over our last loop here, so chain six again. And then yarn over and pull through two all the way until you have one loop on your hook. So again, it's looking kind of odd. So we're just going to be doing the same thing, only we're going to be doing purl stitches this time. So bring your yarn to the front, bring it down, going into your next stitch. We're going to put a purl stitch, and again in the next, do a purl. Then grab your loop together, bring it down, 
bring your yarn in front, come down to your first stitch and make a purl. And again, don't don't leave too much um, space here. You want it kind of <clears throat> cinched up. Okay, and when I say first stitch, I mean the first stitch after your chain loop. Okay, go and purl in the next two stitches. There's one and two. And bring it together, fold it down, bring the yarn in front, find that next stitch after your loop, and purl there, and purl in the next two. And repeat one more time. And come down, find that first stitch after the loop. And then going through both loops on the edge to need a simple stitch on the last stitch. So now we have two rows of loops. And they're directly on top of each other. And return pass again, same as before. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then you can kind of see that's where you need to do your chaining because it has just a slight, slightly longer loop there. So chain six. And repeat all the way across, same exact thing. Yarn over, pull through two, three times, and chain six. Yarn over, pull through two, three times, chain six, and then yarn over, pull through two until you have one loop left on your. To bind up this pattern, your previous row would have been a purl row, so I'm going to do a Tunisian simple stitch with a slip stitch. Tunisian simple stitch and then slip stitch and then bring it forward and find your next stitch after the loop Tunisian simple stitch and slip stitch so it's the same pattern you're just finishing it with the slip stitch so we're working each stitch off our hook at the same time instead of leaving them all on our hook at once. Okay, so continue that across. Simple stitch and then slip stitch. Bring that closer together and slip stitch. And going through both loops on the edge, you're over pull up a loop and slip stitch. So here's this little tiny sample that just has three rows of loops. To show you how to make it. Not cute. So on my original cloth, I have 12 rows of the loops here. Okay, and I have the pattern on my website, thepurplepancho.com. You can look up the Tunisian spa cloth series. This one is spa cloth number 20 on thepurplepancho.com, so you can search that up and get all the stitch counts and rows that are needed to make this size. This is just the small washcloth size. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make this really fun little loop. You can make them in any size that you like and they give a really fun effect to your projects. Thank you for watching and thank you for crocheting with me today and have a wonderful day.